are watching West Harper Community West Television. Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. For the community, by the community. Celestial greetings. I'm Janet Booth, a professional astrologer from West Hartford, Connecticut, and welcome to my program on astrology called Looking Up. I entitled this episode better days ahead. We've had some very difficult times. I mean, it goes way back. You can probably remember I started talking to you back in 2011 about this long-term, and I mean long-term, standoff between crazy Uranus and pushy Pluto forming the 90-degree quarter of the circle called a square and it even got a little hairier. I mean, the exactness of that square was strongest from 2012 to 2015. It's supposedly backing off now, but not in any hurry, and only just getting a little bit off of that exact 90. And then finally, it's going to get more and more off that exact. But before it was really done, Jupiter came in and joined in a form that we call a T-square. And you've seen me try to form this with my hands before, but in deference to my friend Donna, who says I should have real illustrations, I've made you real illustrations with my black magic marker. So that's what a T-square looks like. And we had the square between, uh, well, it would have been from your viewpoint this way, Uranus and Pluto. Eh, it might have even been this way. Let's not get fussy on details. Jupiter came in across from Uranus and square to Pluto, and that just makes it all the tougher. You know, when we talk about a T-square, the T might stand for tension or trouble, and hopefully it also, also leads to a turning point. And that's the best you can hope for out of a T-square. Now, on occasion, something comes and adds to that picture, and turns the T into something that we call a grand cross. And then we feel like we're hanging on a cross. Everything is at cross purposes. Well, not everything, but everything that the four or more planets on the four points of the cross are related to get into a mess. It's kind of a jumble. It's just way too much tension and not so much of the turning point. So we'd like to put these away for a little bit and look towards the brighter days. That's why I'm wearing my new scarf that looks kind of like clouds on a sky. And that's to make us think of blue skies, happy days, puffy clouds. Yippee! So this Jupiter-Pluto square is kind of the last licks of that T-square. It was exact on March 30th. And it has one more time that it's going to be exact, but that's not till August 4th. But believe me, the way time flies, that'll come up soon enough. But I mean, spring was pretty much marred by that T-square. And in fact, it was strongly in place at the spring equinox. And if you've been a viewer for a while, or if you've studied any astrology, you know that anything that's going on at the beginning or first moment of a season is kind of carried through at least in the background, for that whole three-month season. So fortunately, when we get to the summer solstice in June, around that 21st, this T-square is not in a strong, close-to-exact frame at all. And therefore, summer is going to be easier than spring was, than winter was, than the past six or seven years were even if it's just a little easier, aren't we all happy about that? So 
I mentioned in our December episode, as we did looking ahead to 2017, that there were a couple of really good days coming up on May 5th and May 7th. Now this program, I believe, will first air on May 5th, and that will be at 8 p.m. Eastern. And that's sort of in the final hours of the best part of that day. But I would say even, oh, probably morning and afternoon were even nicer. But it's, in general, a very good day. You know, you're probably familiar with, I tell you many times about my Janet's Planets astrological calendar and how I go through and I analyze every single day of the whole year. And I give them numbers, and the numbers are like a rating. And that May 5th is rated 4 out of 5, and hardly any 5s. 4 is very good. And May 7th is also rated a 4. So if you have the opportunity to do anything important on either or both of those days, that's wonderful. Or maybe you'll look and see, oh, you already did something, unbeknownst to you that it was such a great day on the morning of the 5th. And watch and see how that kind of blooms and blossoms as time goes by. Now, the... Um, Seventh, if you're watching this on the night of the fifth, is Sunday. The early afternoon is probably prime time. And these two times are both listed in the best and worst days in the Janet's Planets for new ventures. And I had misspoken when I mentioned them in December. I was mixed up as to whether they were in the first half, the waxing or build up part of the moon cycle, or if they were the wind down waning phase. But they're in the waxing phase, which means it's good for starting something new. So maybe you'll have a chance to on Sunday. Or if you're seeing this later in May, there was one other really good day in the Janet's Planet's best list for new ventures, and that was May 31st. Now there's a big kind of gap between those because we have our full moon May 10th, and then we have two weeks after that until the next new moon May 25th, when it's in the waning phase. And that's a wonderful time to um, continue things or add to things that have already been begun, but not that you want to like launch them off and get them going from the get-go. So why is it that I liked that early May time frame so much? Well, not only is that T-square fading away, but we have part of one of my favorite patterns. When planets are at three or more points of what would form a five-pointed star, they're making what I call a quintile triangle. Quintile is the connection that's one-fifth of the sky apart, or 72 degrees, and there's something called a biquintile that's 144 degrees. So you could have planets at those three positions, and it could be more than three planets. You might have a grouping or something, and they would form a triangle that's extra special, lucky, and brings out talents because the quintiles and the biquintiles are considered aspects or links, connections of luck and talent. So this is what we've got, a major one between oh, it's a 72, between Jupiter and Saturn at that time. And it's exact on May 3rd and then again on June 5th. So they're never far out of that 72-degree relationship throughout all of May. And Jupiter is our biggest planet. It brings expansion. It helps with prog progress. It opens doors. It gives optimism and hope. It's very good for anything that involves the internet. It's in charge of everything related to the media, all forms of media. And as the ruling planet of the sign Sagittarius, it gets an extra bump with this quintile because Saturn is traveling through Sagittarius and kind of bows to Jupiter as the ruler. And here they have this very nice relationship that's kind of extended. And during that time frame, we have three of the quick-moving planets move into position to form a quintile triangle with them. So first we have the Sun, and the Sun will be in the right degree on May 10th to the 11th, 
And what's important about that is we have a full moon on May 10th. So full moons are blossomings, culminations, thing, things come to a peak. And this is very wonderful because when the sun, well, when it's a full moon, the sun and the moon are opposite one another. So we're kind of getting our full light from the sun through the moon's reflection. It kind of bumps the sun energy up a little bit anyway. Now, if we were to say Saturn is a manifester, Saturn helps us organize things, get all our ducks in a row, um, figure out what structures should be in place, what rules should we operate by. And when we add that with Jupiter, we say we bring about luck when we add that talent of um, expanding the base or the structure or finding our most advantageous way of organizing things. When the sun plugs into this pattern, the sun is a creative energy. It also has a lot to do with executive ability and leadership. So this would be a time around that full moon where you might find you could really take your organizational talents and broaden something or bump it up a notch, especially when you plug your creativity into it or your leadership ability. Now at the end of May, on the 31st, remember that was another best day for new ventures, Mercury is in the right position to turn that Jupiter-Saturn quintile into the QT, quintile triangle. And Mercury is a communication planet. It's everything from your own thoughts inside your own head to putting it on paper, putting it out on the internet, uh, sharing it in a classroom. And this is a great time for you to crystallize your ideas or put something on paper if you're working on perhaps a business plan. Maybe you're finalizing it or maybe you're presenting it to somebody. Maybe you've been working on that business plan since the beginning of the month with your creative impulses and now you're ready to talk about it. Venus moves into the right degree to form that QT from June 23rd to the 25th. Now, in the case of Mercury, it was only one day because Mercury's really fast and there's just maybe a one degree difference in that 72 between Jupiter and Saturn. And Venus, it takes a couple of days to do it because it's just a little slower than Mercury. But Venus is our planet about money values, cooperation, teamwork, partnership. So again, if you have some kind of big idea that you're trying to manifest or bring out through um, publicizing it through the internet or some other form of media, when Venus is in this QT, you'll have some luck either partnering with somebody or doing it with a team situation or putting some money where your mouth is or maybe receiving money. Say you presented that business plan on the 31st of May, maybe by three weeks later, by June 23rd, three and a half weeks later, you've got the money in the bank to really start the project rolling. Now this could also just mean socially it's a wonderful time. You know, uh, Jupiter likes to get out and about. It's traveling through the sign of Libra, which is ruled by Venus, a very relationship and partnering oriented sign. So you can see how there's a plenty of good um, possibilities for even just using this QT as a fun social time right there around the summer solstice. I'm just looking to see what days of the week are the 23rd to the 25th of June. Oh, yippee! It's a weekend. 23rd is a Friday, 25th is a Sunday. This Friday and Saturday are both number three days. Sunday's a two, so you probably want to work with the Friday or the Saturday. Hmm. And that's pretty appropriate too because Friday is Venus's day. You can hear that in the French word vendredi and Saturday, Saturn day, it's Saturn, Saturn's day. So we'll be working with the sort of days of the week appropriate to two out of the three planets that are in that QT. Now there's another kind of triangle. It's not quite as lucky and um, easy as this quintile triangle, but we have one of those coming up too, also involving Jupiter. Of the planets further out from what we call our personal planets would be Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars. 
Mars takes two years to go around the zodiac. We then jump out to 12 years around the zodiac is Jupiter. So that's sort of mid-range Jupiter, Saturn is almost 30, and then you go to the really far out ones. But Jupiter moves fast enough as a mid-range planet that it does a lot of interesting aspects in the course of one year. It is in something called a quincunx, which is five signs away, and kind of a mis mixed message and mismatch. Um, by itself, a quincunx is not the greatest, but it's doing this with Neptune. Started last fall, the first of three dates was October 23rd, and I may have talked to you about it last fall. The second is right in the middle of May on the 17th, and the third one comes up July 4th, 5th in that time frame. So a quincunx by itself kind of says, oh, here are two things that the signs they're in have nothing in common. Neptune is in Pisces. It's a water sign. It's very feely. It's very impressionable. It reacts to things. N uh, meanwhile, Jupiter is in Libra. Libra is an air sign. It's all about communication, things out in the open. Jupiter's an out in the open planet. Neptune can kind of be mm, fogged or hiding behind a veil. So there's not a natural groove between the two of them. But when we have another planet that gets into the proper position, it forms a special kind of triangle. It's, if you remember from geometry, an isosceles triangle, which means two sides that are equal and a third side that's not equal to those first two. So we have two planets or two points on the zodiac that are five signs apart in one direction, five signs apart in the other direction. Five plus five is 10. The other two are on the base in what's called a sextile, 60 degrees apart, very good flow of energy in a sextile. Things are smooth. We put in a little effort, we get a lot of return. So when we have not just a bare quincunx, but we've got the two joined by the sextile, this is called a finger of God, or some people also call it a yod or a yod. And uh, that's from the Hebrew letter, um, I think, for God. Anyway, don't quote me on that. The finger of God, if there was anything exactly across from the apex point, this is called the release point, and it would make it even kind of more powerful down at anything at this point. So what we have is Jupiter, Neptune, Quincunx, and first it's turned into a finger of God by quick little Mercury, uh, May 27th, 28th, round there. It's doing that from Taurus. So if we said we have uh, Jupiter in Libra and Neptune in Pisces, it would be Mercury in Taurus. Now we go a couple months later and fast Mercury has moved from Taurus into Leo. It's going to make a finger of God again July 13th to 14th, but this time it's doing it from Leo and what we would see is that the sextile is Jupiter and Mercury, Libra and Leo, pointing to the apex of the Neptune and Pisces. So. They're a slightly different animal, not terribly. One thing that's interesting about a finger of God, I think of it as sort of like pointing the way for us. We think we want to go over here, but the finger of God's pointing us over here, and we get a course correction, and there's a detour, and we have to change and come over here to a different place. So we end up someplace other than what we think we're going to, and yet when we get there, we go, oh, this is pretty good. I was not anticipating this kind of outcome when I went through that detour. And sometimes it's so cosmic, we go, you know, I'm sure this is exactly where I'm supposed to be, even though it's not what I thought I was supposed to be doing. So when we see Mercury coming into the picture with Jupiter and Neptune, remember Jupiter expands everything. Neptune can be fog or confusion or doubt or fear. We might say, oh, we've got some big fears here. Mercury and Taurus very grounded. It's a nice earth sign, very practical, reality-based. It says, I'm going to just see what is the truth here, and that's going to kind of pierce the Neptunian veil and help break that fear. Uh, we can also say that that finger of God points to Jupiter, so having information or doing proactive communication helps with partnering, helps with teamwork, and that makes things either clearer or it 
provides an opportunity for us to use the creative and imaginative side of Neptune in a very positive way. Now when we get Mercury into the other position in July, when it's in Leo and making this finger of God, the Leo-Libra combination on that sextile is wonderful for group creative work or individual creative work. Leo is a sign that has to do with children and our childlike joy and kind of playfulness. So we might say we feel free to play and when we do that we find that it sparks our imagination to that Neptune and Pisces at the apex and really helps us come up with some exceptional ideas. So you might find, especially if you have opportunity to sort of take time off there in the middle part of July and just let your creative juices flow and see what you come up with for some wonderful ideas. Now we also have another finger of God that's formed with that same Jupiter um, Neptune quincunx and it is formed by Venus when it gets into those mid degrees of Taurus where uh, Mercury is forming the first finger of God near the end of May. So from June 19th to the 20th, Venus makes this um, sextile with Pisces, Neptune. This is good because Venus will be in Taurus. Venus rules Taurus. Together they're very tuned into all of the senses, but especially to aesthetics and what looks good together. And even how you can have form and function work together for something beautiful that's also practical. So we bring that together with the Neptune, which again is that great imagination, and Neptune rules the sign of Pisces. So we have sort of a strong placement for each of this Venus and Neptune in that base sextile. And they point to that Jupiter, which could mean great cooperation or partnership, teamwork, but it can also just mean wonderful opportunities to bring your ideas out through anything in the media. And the Libra sign of, ne of Jupiter's placement is really good for working your contacts, networking. If you don't know somebody, you know somebody who knows somebody. You're probably only one or two degrees of separation away from making something big and special happen. So don't worry when little detours kind of take you slightly off of where you thought you were going. Build a bridge to where it is you want to get. And when you get there, you're going to find it's even better than what you had thought was going to be. So the other pattern that we have when I say, oh, better days ahead. We've got a trine, a grand trine coming into place. And I know I talked about this in the forecast for the year. but. A tri grand trine is three 120 degree angles called trines that are equilateral or equal distance apart in the zodiac. And this is considered to be the best kind of energy generator between the planets. Things flow very smoothly. Generally these are positions that are in the same element and indeed that's what we have the case with here. It's the fire element. And last month in April, we talked about how the north node of the moon has moved into Leo and will be there for about a year and a half. And it comes to the end of the sign first, to the high 20 degrees, and then moves down. So it's in the high 20s. Meanwhile, we've got Saturn and Sagittarius, another fire sign, into the mid to high 20s. And Uranus in Aries, another fire sign, in the mid to high 20s degrees of the 20s. And even that sort of strange Eris, the new bossy planet out past Pluto that sometimes like to, likes to disrupt things, it's also in Aries around 23 and it comes into this pattern. So we've got this being joined several times throughout the summer. The exciting part in um, May is that the main slow-moving third of this triangle is Saturn in the trine with Uranus. That's exact on May 18th to 19th. So that's really good. We have Mercury is together with Uranus at the full moon on May 10th. 
Then it comes around to the Leo position uh, July 23rd at that new moon and joins into this triangle. Uh, Venus will be crossing Uranus June 1st to the 3rd and making uh, or adding to this triangle. Mars is going to be opposite Saturn. And when we have anything opposite one of the points on the grand trine, it's turned into something we call a kite. Maybe it looks more like a kite if you look at it this way. But this has a little of the challenge from an opposition being included, but it's got sextiles, trines, so many of the positive, easy-flowing connections or aspects that it really is something that helps us just take situations that might seem nice and kind of fall into our lap with a grand trine, and we use the push from the opposition to lift it and have that kite effect. So Mars is doing that from late May into early June as it opposes Saturn the 28th to the 29th of May and it's sextile Uranus on the 30th of May. Mars comes close to the north node in that triangle at the August 21st solar eclipse. And in late August, Jupiter is going to be opposite, let's see, Uranus and Eris, and it will also make a uh, grand trine, maybe from a different angle, turns that into a kite. The sextile from Jupiter to Saturn is on August 27th, but that whole time frame, sort of late August into early September, has that kite effect. So what you're going to find is that you can take things that are sort of an easy situation, and by the way, this fire grand trine it starts in May, and it goes all the way through to October. It starts sort of breaking up in November as the North Node gets to the lower degrees. It slips out of the 20s there. So there are a few bumps in May. I won't say that they're not. We have something that is a half square between Venus and Sun, but they're normal part of the Venus-Sun cycle. It's not a really heavy-duty thing. But they kind of like mess a little with Jupiter around the 20th. 19th, 20th of May, so that's not your best part of the month of May. And there's also some messing with Pluto around the 25th between Venus and Sun, and that includes at the new moon on the 25th. Um, and even I said in Janet's Planets, I said, watch out for rocky days in the market from around the 25th of May to the 3rd of June, because Venus is coming together with that crazy Uranus and that discordant Eris. So that's what's brewing for May. There's other things we could talk about when we get a little later into the summer. So we're going to leave it there for today. But I do want to encourage you to try to make some good use of these better days that are ahead because we've had so much lately, you know? Better. Sunny. Blue skies. Looking up. See you again soon. Mm -hmm.